Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. I get a little emotional, <laughs> but I can't tell you what a joy it is to be here with all of you today. When Pastor Jim called, I said, is he nuts? <laughs> could, I call? <laughs> could I fill in for him? I'm in Illinois. He's over here. How am I going to get there? Am I going to drive? Am I going to fly? What am I going to do? What will I pack? What will I take? Where am I, you know, where will I stay? All of those things. But you know, when God calls, we all have to listen. And I really feel that God was calling me here to be here again with all of you. So forgive my emotional uh, speech. But anyway, I'm glad to be here. And, and thanks. I'm, thank I'm grateful to him for inviting me. Well, Barb is such a good secretary. She's got everything lined up here for me. By the way, I'm Pastor Audrey Catalano. <laughs> and um, some of the announcements are that we honor the signs at the end of the pews that say, you know, the, the roles that are okay to sit in and the roles that are not okay to sit in. Before I forget, the reason I can't wearing that mask, that shield, is it blurs my vision with my glasses. It's not very clear. So I'm not a rebel. I could be, but I'm not a rebel. I'm not trying, I'm not trying to not follow the, the rules and regulations. But I thought you'd rather have, it, have me talk clearly and see clearly than to be stumbling around. So, and I will put my mask on right at the close of the service. So the rows honor the seating, which is every other row to sit in. Our masks, we have to continue to wear them and uh, I think that most of you are, if not all of you, are honoring that, and I will honor it too at the end of the service. There are different stations, I understand, around. The, there are also extra masks in the back if you need one. And there are stations, I gather, in different locations for hand sanitizer. So if you feel the need for that or if you'd like to use that, not like, but you should really probably use it at least once when you come into church or leave. And then we received a um, thank you note from one of the parishioners. And it says, to all of my King of Kings family, a big thank you for all of the get well cards and phone calls to let me know you were thinking of me and keeping me in your prayers. I am doing well and hope to see you all very soon. Thank you all so much. Marilyn, is it Elbison? Allison. Thank you. Thank you to, uh, to her. And are there any other announcements that anybody wants to jump on board and, and uh, make? Yes, sir. I didn't hear that. Jam session at 2 o'clock. Yeah, I saw those people working crazy that, like yesterday when I was here. And uh, I can't tell you, I can't say enough about the music. I am so f filled with Ooh, <laughs> this is really beautiful. So let's give our musicians a hand. It's kind of like you don't want it to stop when it starts, isn't it? It just kind of fills you with all kinds of good thoughts. So without further ado, we will do our confession and forgiveness. And if you are able to stand, please do so. If not, that's fine too. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray.
All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God by the gift of grace in Jesus Christ. God makes you righteous. Receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Amen. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Please join me in praying the prayer of the day. Gracious God, throughout the ages, you transform sickness into health and death into life. Open us to the power of your presence and make us a people ready to proclaim your promises through the whole world. Through Jesus Christ, our dearly Lord. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. Say to those who are fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read responsively Psalm 146. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I Put not your trust in rulers. In the world, the world. When they breathe their last, they return to earth. And in that day, their Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help. who made heaven and earth, the seas, and all that is in them, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who hunger. The Lord, sets the, of grace. the Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord, the the Lord cares for the stranger the Lord sustains the orphan and the widow. The Lord shall reign forever. A reading from James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings 
and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the one who was poor you say, stand there or sit at my feet. Have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has God chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised for those who love him? But you have dishonored the poor. It is not the rich who oppress you. Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you. You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to the scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law of as transgressors. For whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said, you shall not commit adultery, also said, you shall not murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So speak and so act as those who are judged by the law of liberty, for judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, go in peace, keep warm and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what is the good of that? So faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Let us listen now and hear the words of the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there. Yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him. And she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Galilean, a Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the devil out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it is not fair to take children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the crumbs from the children. Then he said to her, for saying that, you go. The devil has left your daughter. And so she went home and found the child lying on the bed and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went to, by way of Sidon, towards the Sea of Galilee and the region of Decapolis. They brought to him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private away from the crowd and put his fingers in his ears and he spat and touched his tongue. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and he said to him, Ephatha, that is, be open. And immediately his ears were open, his tongue was released and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished beyond measure, saying he has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. You may be seated. Mercy, peace, and love to you from our Lord and, and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
This morning, this, with this gospel lesson, I could say that this is one of the more difficult gospel lessons on which to preach. Every year, there are approximately five sermons that are difficult for pastors to preach, and I know that because some have told me that. I can't help but think that this one offers some of those challenges for me today. So with God's help and the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I pray that God will allow the Holy Spirit to speak the words through me for all of you, for all of us to understand and to hear God's words as God intends for us to hear them. Now in this text, we join Jesus and his disciples in this passage on a return trip from the region of Tyre where with some earnest persuasion and on the part of the Galilean mother who is determined to ask Jesus to heal her daughter and who will not take no for an answer as the Syrophoenician woman comes running toward Jesus and falls on her knees before him. We are told that Jesus was reluctant to serve them at first and counterintuitive as it seems to see Jesus as portrayed as reluctant to heal precisely because the child was Gentile. And Jesus at first perceived his mission as being primarily directed toward his fellow Jews, for they lived in that town. At least until the children of Israel received the message that Jesus might be healing people that aren't of his nationality. And of course, coupled with that, all the gossip in the town was talking about this Jesus. He seems to be reluctant. There's a woman that wants her child healed, but she is not one of us. She is a Gentile. So I'm sure there were a lot of things going through Jesus's mind at the time and kind of treading lightly because I think we all know sometimes when there's gossip in the town or in the church or any place, we, uh, there's always someone that's fearful of something happening. And I believe that when we have those thoughts and when those things happen, it's because we have expectations of what might happen. We have expectations of the people that are surrounding us and what's going on. Tyre, or Tyra, is the place where Gentiles live mostly, and Jesus now going to heal a demon-possessed child. Healing a gentle child in a Jewish town is not, for lack of a better word, very kosher. So in this story, the Syrophoenician woman, the accent falls on the question of mission to the Gentiles. I'm sure that was going through Jesus' mind, which made, it, made him seem like he was being hesitant to approach a Gentile in a town of all Jews. So in this story, this woman, oh, I've said that. Several observations bear out this judgment. The woman who shares the stage with Jesus was Greek, a Syrophoenician by birth, and that is a Gentile. That is important for us to know so that the readers of her status, information, like where she came from, who she is, what is she asking Jesus, are necessary to understand the interactions that she has and that Jesus has with her. So how does Jesus meet this Gentile woman? She's falling at his feet, which is a gesture of a client seeking a favor from a patron or broker. That's kind of the, the symbolism that we can uh, put on this. This shows she has tremendous faith in Jesus, even though she has only heard about him through word of mouth, but has never met him. Think about the strength that this woman has without knowing Jesus, but having heard about him. We don't know if it was through the gossip or was it, if it was a justifiable kind of information going around, but she was determined to get to him to heal her daughter. Jesus' response is that the favor of God should go first to the children of the family, that is to Israel. The woman's reply indicates unusual trust in Jesus as God's broker, and the child is healed in response. You know, when I think of the Syro Syrophoenician woman, it, it fascinates me because there's, something, there's some strength there. 
that she has that probably a lot of people have, maybe not. Sometimes people wish they had that kind of strength. So as I look at her and the feelings that she has toward Jesus and healing this child, her faith stands out the most. And the faith has not been mentioned in this, in this message in the gospel that we read, that we read today. Her, her faith has, has come out in symbolism, but not the word. The word has not. And her, her, her idea was, and her, her thought was, that she is not going to be refused by Jesus. She is going to try her hardest to get him to change his mind about hesitating to heal her child. Jesus relented, as we know, and he healed the child with a word. She's a model of faith, even though the word faith is not used in the text. The combination of her submission, her persistence, and her expectant trust exemplifies dimensions of faith which are not apt for the instruction and nurture of a community undergoing faith crisis. Now, you might think it was kind of strange when we read about the dogs. Jesus said, you know, we have to feed the children first before anything can happen here. And this woman, in her determination and her persistence, says, but sir, don't the dogs eat the crumbs from the children? It was kind of like, I got one up on you, Jesus. You can't refuse now. And he doesn't refuse. The woman replies, her reply indicates the unusual trust in Jesus as God's broker, and the child is healed in her response. She went home and found her daughter relaxed on the bed, sleeping, and the demon torment was gone. Now Jesus left the region of Tyre, went through Sidon, back to Galilee, and over to the next town. Some people brought a man who could neither hear or speak, and asked Jesus to lay a healing hand on him. He took the man off by himself in privacy, put his fingers in the man's ears, and spat on the man's tongue. Then Jesus looked up in prayer, and he groaned mightily and commanded, Ephetha, and it happened. It was closed or open. His ears were open. He could hear, and his speech was plain just like that. And then Jesus urged them to keep it quiet. This is another thing I, 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 I think about. You know, Jesus, the son, of, the son of man, son of God, hesitating, not wanting to be widely known. Doesn't it bring a little question to your mind? He was Jesus. The man, uh, then Jesus urged them to keep quiet, but they, they all kept, kept it up more. We're going to shout it to the housetops. We're going to tell everybody that Jesus, the Son of God, is among us, has been here. He's done it, and he's done it well. He gives hearing to the deaf and speech to the speechless. Now, spitting, I don't know about you, how you reacted to that when you heard that. It was a little kind of, you know, not something that you thought might be appropriate to, to read in a gospel. But believe it or not, spitting is a common action to ward off evil. That was the significance of it in Jesus' time. Since words spoken in healing episodes are understood to have power embedded in them. And Mark, the author of this gospel, once again provides the reader with aromatic original language. If translated, the words would lose their power through the action of Jesus takes place in private. The, re the results are soon evident to the crowd, and once again we encounter Jesus, his request for secrecy. Finally, believe it or not, there is some, the stories are both about Jesus. They tell of the irrepressibility of reign and power of God in him. Gerard Manley Hopkins wrote a sonnet the sonnet was called God's Grandeur. And that sonnet affirms God's splendor in the world. 
This lesson from Mark affirms God's power in Jesus. It is a sign of God's ultimate glorious purpose for this world. It flames out in the most unlikely places. It gathers to a greatness in the experience of the Syrophoenician woman, the deaf mute man of Decropolis, and who knows what other hearers in the presence of this word are. Now I want to tell you, I should have told you in the beginning of the sermon, when I preach, I never say amen at the end. Because if we say amen, it's like it's finished. We've heard it. We don't have to think about it again. But I don't want that to be the case when we read and we hear a sermon about a text in the gospel because it should be ongoing. There should be something about the sermon that catches your ears, that catches your thoughts, that you want to think about throughout the week. And I think that the Syrophoenician woman gave us a lot of examples of that, of her persistence, her faith. You know, what is my faith like? When I became a Lutheran, the thing that I liked, one of the things that I really liked the most was that they lived their faith in action. It's not just sitting down and believing in God. It's living that faith in action. And I was extremely impressed with all the ministries that the Lutheran Church has. Quilting is one of them. I have to get that in, Carol, because I, otherwise I won't have lunch tomorrow. You know? But anyway, um, so this is what, I, this is what I, I would hope that would happen, is that some of the points, some of them we might say, oh, I don't want to think about that. Oh, and some of them maybe really kind of got you thinking. Could be gossip. It could have been the faith of a woman, the persistence. It could have been um, that Jesus was not wanting to be known wherever he went. What was that all about? Question those things and see where it takes you for the rest of the week. In Christ you have heard the word of faith, the gospel of salvation. We believe in him and are marked with the seal of the promised Holy Spirit. Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. In the words of the Apostles' Creed, I believe, I believe in God, <clears throat> Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I, I believe, believe in, in Jesus Christ, Christ God's, God's only Son, Son our Lord. Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. And the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, 
the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all in need. Holy One, you bring your people together in worship, enliven your church, guide all evangelists, preachers, prophets, and missionaries who seek to share your love through word and deed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You provide water for thirsty ground and sunshine to feed hungry plants. Bless all who advocate for healthy forests, unpolluted air, and clean waterways. Inspire all people to show care for the world you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show no partiality. Increase justice in all nations. Encourage leaders and governments to work with one another for the good of our common world. Unite us in sinking the health, safety, and dignity of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You accompany those who are most in need. Shelter all fleeing violence or persecution. Protect any who are in danger and sustain them through uncertain and unstable times. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You support the work of your disciples. Continue to nurture the leadership and ministries of this congregation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You are merciful. We pray for healing to all those who are ill or suffering, especially Marilyn, John, Gail, Nancy, Sharon, Howard, Isabel, Isaiah, Jean, Linda, Sharon, Phil, Violet, Bob, Alex, Diane, Ken, Karen, Raymond, Bob, Jermina, Clay, Joy, Suzette. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You embrace all who have died in the faith and brought them into your glorious presence. We thank you for their example and rejoice in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. I invite all of you to mention any mention aloud or in your hearts, those you have promised to pray for and those that you wish to pray for, for healing. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts, known only to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace be always with you. And also with you.
Let us pray the, the offering prayer as one voice. God of abundance, you call streams to break forth in the desert and manna to rain from the heavens. Accept the gifts you have first given us. Unite us with the offering of our lives to nourish the world you love so dearly. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right and salutary in our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymns. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, he blessed the bread, and he gave it for all to eat, saying, Take and eat, this is my body, given for you. Do this to remember me. Again after supper, Jesus took the cup, he blessed the cup, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this to the remember me. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil, and glory forever and ever. We are all invited to receive communion at this time. Body of Christ given for you. The blood of Christ shed for you.
Lord of life, in the gift of your body and blood, you turn the crumbs of our faith into a feast of salvation. Send forth, send us forth into the world with shouts of joy, bearing witness to the abundance of your love. In Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. People of God, you are Christ's body, bringing new life to a suffering world. The Holy Trinity, one God, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 